My name is uh, Dr. Amoyao, and uh, I'm a Ghanaian, and uh, I'm a new faculty member here in the School of Pharmacy in Central University. Yeah. Uh, prior to coming here, I was in the U.S. Uh, I was in academia, and uh, I was teaching and doing research at the same time. I, I, was, I went to school there, and then uh, I went to uh, first, when I went to the U.S., I was in the University of Houston, and uh, I later transferred to Atlanta, Georgia, because uh, my professor had an appointment and I had to go with him. So, whilst I was in Atlanta, I had two schools. I was in Georgia Institute of Technology and Clark Atlanta University. Okay, and I ended up writing my dissertation with Clark. Okay, even though I did a lot of my coursework in Georgia Tech, yeah. During my academic journey uh, in the U.S., I did a lot of projects, okay. Uh, but for my dissertation, uh, I did work on anti-malarials. And uh, there, was, there was a sub-project that I did on water purification, okay. So the water purification happened to be my dissertation, actually, okay. And in my postdoctoral journey, I did more work on anti-malaria, yeah. Well, with malaria, new variants always come, and so my re research actually was on developing drugs that will be able to uh, intervene with uh, the curing of uh, the uh, malaria itself. So we use the chloroquine, which we know of as the base, and then we, uh, we find our lead compounds, our lead which we synthesize, and then uh, it has been found to be very effective. It's still in the developmental process. Yeah. The other projects, especially the water purification, uh, uh, there has been a very good uh, development on it. Uh, we just were able to find out that uh, most of the compounds we developed, you see, they were synthetic materials, and they can remove metal ions particularly from water bodies to a very to like PPB levels. Okay, so they were very, very good for the, uh, for the work, for the purification process. Well, with regards to the education system in Ghana, me personally, I think it's, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Only that in every system, there should be something like professional development that should be encouraged more so that professors or teachers should be able to improve upon the things that they've been teaching, not necessarily being stagnant with uh, most of the things. I mean, if for example, you happen to be a teacher or a professor or a lecturer who have been teaching one subject for let's say five years, they should be, the students must be able to see some improvement in your lecture materials, not necessarily what you taught five years ago, you are teaching it today and that kind of thing. So with regard to those things, I think that's the concern, I think, uh, maybe here. Uh -huh. I've been in academia all my life in the U.S., so I've had opportunity to even teach in the, uh, uh, let's say, basic secondary school up to the university. Uh, I've mostly taught in the university, okay, but in the basic and secondary level, let's say the secondary level, uh, I noticed that I, I have participated in the teaching itself, and I have been something like examiner or proctor, proctor there. So, uh, I'm so much engrossed into it. And being a Ghanaian and comparing, I noticed that uh, we are not all that bad, only that we don't believe that we are doing good, you see. That being said, doesn't mean that uh, there's no room for improvement, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then with the university system, uh, I, I think uh, the only thing that I see that is a bit lacking here is uh, uh, when we are doing labs here, sometimes, we have to aggregate a lot of students doing a particular distance. But the core structure and everything, I think, is equally good as in the U.S. or anything, anywhere else, yeah. Yeah, I think this research that is sitting on the shelf from other professors, I, I believe that they can uh, still publish them. And the best way is usually to do research in collaboration with other people in other universities. And so doing, even if you don't have the funds, somebody may be able to sponsor with, uh, with the funding, you see. So I believe that most of them, 
these problems that they are having is due to the fact that they don't have the means to publish them because some publications you have to really pay for them before you can publish it's not free of charge yeah. I think uh, what is really necessary is to encourage mentorship here it's, it should not be just lecturing or anything of the sort but uh, it should incorporate it should be it should involve mentor mentorship and that's one that I think is a bit lacking here okay so with me my aim is to make sure that I really act as a good mentor to as many students as I can if let's say a student finish bachelor's and he wants to go out for a reason that way I try to mentor them for them to know of the challenges and things that they are likely to face when they go out and if possible if you can start preparing them from here so that when they get there they will be successful. I think uh, those are the things that I personally had those problems when I went there so I wouldn't like people to encounter the same problems. Yeah. In terms of my academic research uh, because of uh, problems with infrastructure uh, I think uh, I will embark upon water purification projects. Yeah. I realized where in Ghana we have uh, environmental problems, polluted water bodies, and even the, the environment, the surroundings. Uh, and so I'm trying to maybe develop systems so that at least we can start arresting some of those problems. Yeah. Some of the challenges I envision to this uh, research will be maybe infrastructural problems and all those things. In terms of instrumentation and uh, maybe chemicals and money funding because some of these things, you know, universities may not be ready to uh, provide the funds for it and uh, you have to solicit funds from other areas, maybe other bodies or other organizations. Some of the things I envision to do is uh, uh, resort to using maybe improvised materials. For example, when I give uh, like water purification, uh, one of the secrets is that you can even use sawdust to even purify water. Just pure this thing. And these things are all over the place. So uh, there are so many things which right now is a research so I cannot reveal to you, but this is just an example. Yeah. So there are so many things that you can use to do some of this basic, basic research. It will, the money aspect will be low and everything will be okay, like in the case of the sawdust. So far, uh, what I've noticed is that uh, when school reopens, uh, everything is relaxed, you know. <laughs> it's like you have to wait for at least a couple of days before everything gains momentum. Whereas maybe in the US, you come to the first day of school and it's like, Two months ago the school has been in session. I'm looking forward to encouraging my colleagues to come. So far a lot of people have already consulted me and they are interested in coming but you know uh, when, after staying somewhere for a number of years to relocate is usually not easy. People are usually afraid to come because they think it will be very difficult and some people do think okay uh, here, there's nothing they can change because people have made up their mind already, which I believe in, in that too, because uh, uh, people have been seeking employment here and they have been frustrated. So now that I'm here, I'm trying to help them in terms of advice and to tell them, look, uh, you, you can make it. I believe in the Ghanaian system and for that matter in Africa, because I've had opportunity to work with other people from other African countries, Cameroon, Nigeria, Egypt, and all those things. And I believe surely that Africans are smart and we are equally good as any other group of people elsewhere. Uh, so my projection is that, uh, well, we still have to be moving up, but we should not feel that our system is inferior. It's very superior to most other systems. Our students are performing very well outside, so why can't we uh, encourage them to continue to do that.